hello today I want to teach you all about a gel plate now this is a complete beginners tutorial when I first started using a gel plate I was scouring the internet for beginner videos ones that told you about the type of paper to use the type of paint the cleanup and the preparation and things like that a lot of the videos out there I found were uh, in-depth tutorials showing you different techniques but I just wanted the very basics so here it is for you now first of all what we're going to go through is everything that you're going to need to get started just for those beginning prints we're not looking at anything too complicated but the tools that you're going to be using how you're using them and why you're using them and then we'll go into a few prints with a few different mediums as well just to see what you can start working towards so of course the first thing you're going to need is a gel plate what is a gel plate so um, gel plates have been on the market for quite a while now but before they were on in the craft industry before they were produced for crafting people used to actually make their own gel plate using glycerin and these would only be able to be used for a couple of weeks at most because of course they're a food product and they would go off you'd need to get rid of them and they would wear and such as well so uh, a gel plate is reusable it is as you can see it's a piece of gel it's very flexible um, the best ones have a really good squish so they're about a centimeter or so deep um, you can feel that there's a bit of cling to them but they shouldn't be sticky you shouldn't be thinking oh I'm really sticking to that you can wash these you can wash them in warm soapy water you can pat them dry and do make sure they're really dry before you use them and uh, for the most part they're clear as well so you can actually see what you're doing if you work with them on a mat you can actually lift this up and place it onto your project and see through as well so they really are such a versatile medium and you can do so much with them so besides our gel plate I like to have a hard um, shiny surface to work on as well this just keeps everything clean you are going to be switching between brayering and paper and cleaning your tools off and all sorts and pressing you're going to want a big enough area that you're not worried about where paint goes so make sure you cover your area and that's why I put this glass mat down but what I'm going to do is before I start working is just tack a piece of paper down with some washi tape now this paper here is just plain copy paper and I've cut it to the size of the pieces of paper that I'm going to be using for my printing so this way if I place those down there I can see the colors that I'm building up on my gel plate there make sure there's no bits of dirt or any hairs or fibers or anything on your plate but also when I'm pressing I can line up if I want to double press so if I want to impress an image peel it off reapply a different color or effect and then do it over the top of the original I can use that base plate here so the white paper underneath to line this up every time so I've got lots and lots of copy paper you don't need expensive paper this is the beauty of a gel plate you can use really inexpensive copy paper if you want to what you do want to avoid doing is using a glossy like a photo paper for example because what will happen is sometimes that glossy surface will stick to your plate and sometimes it can actually damage the surface as you try to remove it so stick to a smooth absorbent cardstock or paper okay there are lots of other materials but we're sticking with basics today as you can see you're going to probably want to use brayers you can use things like a brush you could even put some paint on with your fingers but if you want that smooth surface and you want your paint colors blended brayers are the way to go now I've got different sizes as you can see they're very well loved and they do need a good cleanup really um, and these are going to work very well with this so you can use a big one if you're applying all over the same color smaller one if you're doing more detail mixing colors and such so I've got a range here now paint this is a big thing I would start as a beginner with acrylic paint because this is the easiest uh, medium to clean up if you find you do anything that's not quite right you can get such a range of colors and a little bit really does go a long way now what you're going to find as well is that it doesn't matter what brand of acrylic paint you're using there are fluid paints there are heavy body paints it's fine whichever you prefer to use 
as I said, there are lots of other mediums. I'll talk through a couple of those later on, but definitely as a beginner, start with some acrylic paint. And like I say, you don't need a lot, so dig out those old pots if you want to, scrape out what's in the bottom of them, and let's get started. Now, before we get going, the last thing I want to tell you about, or two more things really, scrap paper again just cheap copy paper i've got that to the side here the side that i brayer with because i'm going to clean my brayer off between um between presses between applying my paint and mixing it or uh, blending it on the plate because there's no cleanup necessary with gel plate printing it's fantastic the paint should for the most part be pulled off of your gel plate with the paper but I do recommend you do wash this once you've finished your crafting session each time and allow it to dry um, but your brayers you can just stick with rolling the excess off on the paper and then just give them a good clean again at the end of the session so it really is a nice quick clean craft to be getting on with the last thing you're going to need if you want to do um, some more interesting prints is things that will leave you uh, different patterns so this is a die cut I've got here I'm going to show you that one I've got a stencil as well um, I've also got a stamp so this is um, a lot of stamps but I'm keeping it on the stamp backing so I'm going to use it as a full stamp there I'm just going to use these three for now to show you the technique but you can use any sort of stamp stencils die cuts it's actually really good fun mixing them and experimenting with different ones and lastly deli paper now this is for a technique so for the very very basics you won't need deli paper so deli paper is like a wax paper it's the sort of paper if you went to a deli um, or uh, certain lunch halls and things they would wrap your sandwich in this you can buy it really inexpensively I've bought about a hundred sheets for something like seven pound so it has a wax coating on one side and a more absorbent coating on the other side so I've got sheets of that ready to use as well and you'll see why in a little while so shall we get started with the actual process of putting some paint onto our plate now I've got this glass plate here and I like to do my mixing on here rather than on my gel plate it's entirely up to you if you want to put your paint directly on there you can do but if you get too much on there, you're going to effectively waste it as such because you're going to have to take it off. If you mix it on here, you can reuse that for the next press. So let's start with a nice bold colour so you can really see what we're doing. And a small blob like this is more than enough. I probably won't even use all of that. Let's go for a nice rich brown as well. So you can really see the colours going together. So again, a small dab of that. And I can clean up really easily. So wet wipes are handy to have by your side as well. Something like some kitchen towel and some water just for a clean up is really handy too. Now because I'm mixing two colours, I'm going to use my small brayer. Bear in mind with a brayer, you do often have a stand. So these two metal pieces that stick out. You don't want to be uh, accidentally using your brayer the wrong way round and digging these into your gel plate because you might damage the surface. It's fairly robust but we want to keep anything sharp away from it so um, there are different types of brayers as well and you'll find there's soft rubber ones there's hard rubber ones all sorts so that is completely preference what you prefer now as I'm mixing my paint I'm not just going back and forth like so I'm actually rolling across and lifting up and going down and rolling across again and this is getting the majority of my roller covered I've got one patch there that I think is now covered there we go so all around my roller is now covered by lifting up and going over again so I can now start applying this to my gel plate there so I'm going to put this on and you don't need a lot of paint to be honest you can um, go with a reasonably thin layer I'm going to put it on a little bit thicker today because I'm going to be slowly talking through everything that I'm going to be doing and make sure that when you're applying this you are going in all different directions to get all angles of the plate now again as I said I'm going to come over to my paper I'm going to clean that off and sometimes this produces some really fantastic patterns as well so you can keep that waste paper as such if we like to call anything waste in crafting and um, use that for backgrounds later maybe punch into it or die cut into it Right, so and again, I'm going to just put this in. Now, I wasn't too precious about rubbing off all of the turquoise 
from my brayer because it's fine. I want to blend these two colours together anyway. So just applying this and starting to blend those two together. And we have got a lovely blend there between the two colours. Let's do our first print. Let's just do a very basic print. So lining up a piece of copy paper, pressing down onto the surface, and then you just want to rub down reasonably hard. Now, you may want to use your hand, you may want to use a brayer for this, and just make sure every part of the surface is covered. And then let's reveal, look at this. So this is now pulling all of that paint off and we've got that beautiful ombre painted effect. And what you'll find is you see more detail, you see much more texture in the print than you ever saw on the plate. And as you can see again, this is virtually clean. So there's very little on there left. There's a little bit there, but that's fine. Let's do this again. Let's do exactly the same colours because I think they're nice and bright so I can really show you um, what's happening on the gel plate. And let's try one of these techniques. So you can layer up your paint effects as well. Let's take the excess from there and go back with the blue, covering our roller again. And let's just apply this to our plate. If your paint is to dry on your plate, say the doorbell rings or one of the children come and ask you to do something, you've just applied your paint, don't worry. There are techniques for um, reinvigorating that paint and I'll go through some of those a little bit later on towards the end. So just add in that brown now in the same way as we did right at the beginning, making sure to get all the areas. I just went off the edge there, but that's fine. Let's do that blend. Now, rather than doing a straight press, let's put on a stencil. So I've got a stencil with letters in, so I'm going to flip this. Not that you're going to see the entire image because of the size of my plate, but here we're going to be able to see the letters the right way round once we've pressed it. So I'm putting my stencil on there and just making sure that's pressed down very gently so it's not going to move around anywhere on my gel plate. And I'm going to take a piece of the deli paper. Now, as I said before, there is a wax side and there is a more absorbent side. So you want to place that absorbent side of the deli paper down. And if I just press into this, you can start to see where that is getting into the parts of the stencil and really starting to lift up and absorb that paint. So just holding it down, it shouldn't move very far at all on your gel plate, but just to be sure, hold it down with one hand and with the other one, just make sure you're pressing into all the smaller areas. There, okay, so I think we've pretty much got most of that. Now, gel plate printing, what I love about it is the organic look, that nothing's ever absolutely perfect and you can never create the same effect twice. Now, just lifting off, so we can see there, we've actually got the impression of that stencil on there. So keep that to the side, because I can use that. If I lift off this stencil as well, we've got a really fantastic texture that's been left in here and let's press that. So let's just print that one sheet of our copy paper over the top, placing it down, give it a good burnish with your hand, with your brayer if you prefer to. I'm quite happy to use my hand on a small area like this, but if you've got a larger um, gel plate you may want to use um, something like the brayer to cover the area and you can see there we've then got that really fantastic um, print there with the negative of the stencil in it where we've lifted the paint up so that's another technique for you now I'm going to switch my colors a little bit and I'm going so I'm going to give this a quick wipe there's a little bit of excess on there so a quick wipe with a wet wipe like I can say it's always handy to have a wet wipe or something similar to hand. You can also use hand sanitizer gel to get colours out of the plate or you could just go and run it under the tap, give it a bit of a soapy wash. It's a good idea though to make sure you use 
piece of tissue and just dry off any excess before you start printing again. Okay, so the next technique we're going to do is using a die cut. Now this is going to be in a very similar way to what we just did with the stencil, but let's take it one little step further as well. So when we're thinking about layers on our gel plate, we need to think about what we're putting on first is what's going to be at the front of the print once you've lifted it off. So we want to lay down the colour that we want at the front first. So I'm going to go with, um, I think I'm going to go with a darker colour at the front. So should we bring in a black? Shall we get a little bit grungy? Let's bring in a black here. I'm going to clean off my brayer a little bit. Not too much, I'm not too worried. Cover it in this black. Do you know what I might do? I might mix my paint. So there we go. Let's put this on and let's bring in some of this brown as well. Let's mix this into a different, uh, a slightly rusty brown. It's not quite the bright orange that it was, but you can do this. You can have some fun. You don't have to lay down and perfectly blend colours if you don't want to. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. You don't want too much paint on your plate because you won't lift it off with the paper. Now, this was a die cut. This has come from a textures panels set from the Steampunk collection. And I'm going to lay this down. I've actually cut a, a, a gold cardstock. So I'm going to lay it down with that shiny side down just to make sure that it doesn't absorb any of the um, paint there and I'm going to just do a print first of all just do a print with that there and see what we can get we'll dig into the detail there and just see so I wanted to lift some color off anyway look at that so rather than on the deli paper I've just done it on the um, directly onto the copy paper now I'm going to lift up some more of that I'm going to bring my deli paper in now the reason we use deli paper is because it is so thin. So because it's so thin, you can really get into all the little nooks and crannies between the stencil. And you can rub that in there and you can feel you've got the squish of the gel plate underneath, helping you to get into all the edges, all the corners. There, okay. Perfect. So again, just lifting it up, being careful not to lift up that um, stencil as such that we've created from a die but now I'm going to lift that up okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to let it dry I'm going to imagine the dog desperately needs to get out the back door into the garden so I'm going to go off and then I happen to catch my neighbour over the fence and have a little chat um, and then I come back and realise oh it's all dried so we'll give that a moment and then we'll come back now, after giving that about 10 minutes or so, because we were using acrylic paint, which is water-based and it dries ever so quickly, um, you can see hopefully that has dried. Once you if, just give it a tap and make sure that nothing is coming off onto your fingers. Bear in mind, my fingers were already a bit dirty, but that's all staying on there. So don't worry, your gel plate is not ruined. This is perfect, this is what we want. So let's bring in a colour. I love this one here. So this is, um, it's like a very pale mint colour. So I'm going to bring this in because this is going to contrast beautifully with the dark blacks and browns that we put down. And what we can do now, just making sure I've got very little in the way of excess on my roller because I'm using such a pale colour and you can keep turning your paper over and checking that that's clean, is I'm going to go all over this. So we're going to brush over and we're going to make this ever so thin as well. So mu probably much less paint than you'd think you would need. So apply it and then remove it. You're going to roll it on gently to make sure you're sealing in that image. You're not going to lift that image off and then rolling off the excess. So you can almost see that image through your paint. Your paint is almost translucent there. 
I don't want to work that all in too much because I don't want to start um, interfering with the pattern that we've got underneath. I think I'm happy with that. So now what we can do is really quite quickly because you've got such a thin layer on there is let's press this. Now we're doing a second impression. We're pulling up that dried paint. So we want to really burnish this nice and hard. But bear in mind we're just using copy paper so we don't want the paint to dry into the paper too much and tear the paper. So you can just pull up the tiniest corner and make sure that it's ready, which it is. And look at this. We're pulling up that dry paint off of our plate. Isn't that gorgeous? How fantastic is that? A lovely sort of steampunk effect. And we've got that lovely mint green in the background. Okay, one more technique for you. In fact, I've got a few more for you, but one more for the basics. And I'm just going to clean up my plate again because there's a little bit of that paint left behind. So clean it up in whichever way you prefer. I, I do love that we don't have to, we don't have to go and wash things up every time. Just a quick wipe with a wet wipe is fine. So the next technique is going to be actually rather than lifting up and having a negative image, we're going to take away the positive. So when we're looking at our stencils that we've just used, the image that we're left with is the negative as such. And I want to show you how you can do this the other way around. So with a stamp, you can lift up the main image. You can lift up the wording. So let's put down, should we go with the dark colors again? So we'll go with these blacks. We'll just mix up what we've got here. I'll soon have to clean this up anyway. So I'm just going to go with the dark colors so you can really see the contrast. Let's a lovely deep brown color we'll see if we can get some specks of um, blue in there as well let's just start layering these colors up it's all good lovely I'll clean this soon I'll give this a good wipe and start afresh but I like to use up the paint as much as possible there we go we've got a lovely coating on there different shades and I'm just going to keep put my stamp over here. I'm not worried about what you can actually read and bear in mind because I'm stamping words this is actually going to give the opposite effect so it's going to be the reflection of the words then you're not really going to be able to read them read the words unless you can read backwards um, but what this is going to do is give you a fantastic text style in the background so you've got paint on here and again do give that a quick wipe but that's something I would probably save for the most part for a proper clean up for later on because you don't want this paint to clean or sorry to dry so again taking our copy paper place that down give that a good burnish with your fingers sometimes if you're using a really inexpensive paper you'll notice from the dampness of the paint the paper can start to wrinkle um, that's fine just maybe switch up your paper if you're not keen on that effect or don't leave it in contact with the paint for quite as long and look at that isn't that just a fantastic background for absolutely anything I love that you can't quite see the words so you can tell it's text it looks like a book paper, book print kind of um, lino print but you can't tell what it means or what it says so you could put this on absolutely any craft project you wanted to without the words meaning anything so that's fantastic other things you can do though is keep that and you can reprint onto that again so let's go in with another pattern so I've cleaned up my area here for my paint just so we can layer on top another colour and I'm going to go with I think I'm going to go with the uh, opaque one. So this is an acrylic that claims to be opaque. So, and that's what I want from this next stage. So I'm going to go with the yellow color. It's like a mustard color there. And again, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to spread this all over my gel plate. I've obviously still got some dark paint on my brayer a little bit. I didn't wash that, but never mind. 
that's fine. We, I like the texture that you get from different colours and such. Now I'm keeping this as quite a thick layer purely because I'm going to be going over black paint so um, I want to make sure that I've got quite a bit there. Now this is smaller than my plate but that's absolutely fine. Putting my stencil on there and then putting my deli paper over the top. If you don't have deli paper to hand or you're, you know, you've ordered some, you're waiting for it to be delivered, there are other materials you can use. Try something like a piece of kitchen towel. Um, try just a piece of thin copy paper. You just need to really work your fingers into those indentations and all of that detail. And you will find the smaller the stencil, I mean, there may be a ready-made stencil like this, or it could be that you've die cut your own sort of template or mask. Either way, if you've got small detail, you will really have to work your way into that more. And you can do that a couple of times if you want to as well. So I've done it once there. I might just go over a few areas here, just picking up any other bits. And the same on this end, just to make sure I've got really got as much as possible lifted up. And bear in mind, and all of your projects have to finish up as the size and the shape as the gel plate of course you can then uh, trim things down so really experiment with different sizes so I've got paint on there that I can then transfer if I want to and let's pop this down so keeping that there we go so that paint was all dry on the first layer completely dry because that was acrylic of course it does dry ever so quickly once it's onto an absorbent surface or a por porous surface like the copy paper now this wasn't exactly over the top I didn't line this up perfectly but let's just have a look at the effect nice clean plate and can you see we've got those yellow swirls in with the text you can layer and layer and layer I'll just show you that nice and closely isn't that just fantastic? Now what you can do if you really want to, while this paint is still damp and you need to be quick with this, is put some embossing powder over the top and that would really make that opaque and vivid as long as your base layer was completely dry. Now I did talk to you about other, um, other mediums that you can put on your gel plate and I'll go over just a couple of those quickly. So I've got my Distress Oxides, for example, and I'm just going to put these directly onto my plate here. You can put them onto a mat, but I don't see any need because you've got a nice, smooth, even coverage with them this way. Onto there, and then I'm going to just use my brayer to make sure that that's nicely spread out. You will find that the oxides will pull slightly on your um, surface there. I need a little more green at the top. I've just mixed that in a bit too much. So pop this on there, a bit more green. And then you can do some of your effects if you want to, so you can still lift up some of the ink, but this is going to be a much more subtle color. It's not going to be as solid as, for example, the paint will be and not as opaque either lift up so we've got an impression of our stamped letters in there and then press this down and let's lift all that ink up onto our copy paper again the letters will be backwards if you use a stencil you can flip it with a stamp you're not able to flip it I can see that's already coming through there so let's lift that up and that is just absolutely gorgeous how stunning is that as a background? Even though the letters are backwards, it doesn't matter. So you can do that. You can put things like string and such on there if you want to, to create different patterns, even things like dried flowers to create like a negative for you. Let's try one other medium. So the last medium I'm going to show you is alcohol inks. I love alcohol inks. I think there's so much you can do with them, but because they're not water-based, you'd probably be thinking that actually they're not going to work with my uh, gel plate. I'm not going to be able to lift off the image. They're going to dry and they're going to stain. Now I can't promise that you won't get staining. It does depend a lot on what the uh, brand is of your gel plate. 
If you do get staining, you can try things like um, stays on remover, so stays on ink pad remover, baby oil is fantastic, or any sort of oil is fanta fantastic for removing a lot of staining. Just make sure you go and give it a good wash afterwards and then leave to dry. But the staining, if you do get it and you can't get it off of your plate, don't worry, it will not affect the performance at all. So let's start just by putting a few blobs of this gorgeous alcohol ink down and start creating some patterns. So some splats there. Um, let's bring in some different colours. Let's bring a pink in as well. And you'll find as well certain colours will stain more so than others. Now, however long you decide to play with these different colours and adding your inks, what you want to do next is just allow it all to dry. And I know that can be quite scary as well, allowing everything to dry on there because effectively, are you going to get it off your plate? That's going to be your biggest worry. Uh, yeah, don't worry, let it dry, let it sit for as long as it takes for the alcohol to evaporate and we'll come back when that's completely dried. Now that's completely dry, I think. It's very hard to tell with our coins because they often have a bit of a shine to them. I'm going to just lift off any excess with my paper. You can see I had a few little splodges that were still a bit damp, so just lift those off. But that is all now stuck to my plate and dried. So what I want to do now is very similar to the way we did it when we had the paint dry on the gel plate, is lift that up. Now I'm going to use a nice opaque white paint for this. I'm going to put it directly on the plate, plate because I've not done that with you yet. I've put it always on my mat here. So I can put it on the plate, make sure my brayer's really clean because I did have distress oxides on there. And let's start putting this paint over the top. Okay, spreading it around. We've got far too much on there. So we're going to take some off. Let's take it off onto our paper, clean our brayer, and lift up some more. And we're working lightly here. We don't want to shift around any of that alcohol ink underneath. Hopefully here you can see where I'm lifting off the ink can start to see that lovely colour underneath and I think that's about ready. Nice smooth surface with the white. Okay, let's let's get that, let's lift it off. Putting our copy paper down, pressing down really hard. Okay, we want to make sure that paint is coming up. Again, if you're not sure whether you've, you've burnished it enough, just lift up a corner. Oh yes, I'm excited for this. Lifting up that corner. Let's do it from this way so you can see. Look at that gorgeous colour. All that alcohol ink coming up onto my paper. Now this is great because if you were to put alcohol ink onto copy paper like this, you would find that it would dry far too quickly for you to manipulate it, for you to roll it around and have fun with it. But by doing it this way, you've got the time to have a play before you transfer it. And if you're not happy with it, you go back in with your ink blending solution or your alcohol blending solution, and you reinvigorate those inks and move them around some more. You can also then carry on reprinting this with all your different other colors and textures as we've seen already in this video. So I've got a little bit of staining there, um, and that came from either the yellows or the greens, the yellows come out, but I'm going to use some oil just to remove that. So that's absolutely fine and not an issue at all. So hopefully this has helped you with some basic techniques. Do let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you'd like to see on this channel with regards to the gel plates, um, different techniques and different mediums maybe. Um, and please, if you did enjoy this video, please subscribe so you can be kept up to date with all other videos that I pop on here. Thank you very much. I'll see you all soon. Take care.